find out. <laughs> okay, we sorry. are recording. Kevin sounds like a, a politician from The Simpsons. <laughs> I, I kind of do, yeah. <laughs> you do, dude. I think I was a politician from The Simpsons, I think, in a past life. Dude, I swear, bro. You are pretty animated. You just have, like, this certain characteristic about your voice. It's a weird thing. I, uh, you know, I really, uh, like, got into the, like, Obama campaign pretty big back in, like, 2008. Like, I was a big Obama supporter. Yeah, you worked and for the campaign. Is that right? I, d- I worked for the 2012 campaign. For Obama. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I wonder if, like... At some point, just by osmosis from like like observing so much Obama, I just like took on some of those like mannerisms and like yeah. manner manner of speaking, and that's kind of why I sound like a politician or something. Dude, I haven't quite figured it out, but psychologically speaking, uh, I think that I'm no and I'm no scientist or no like you know psychologist or anything. But I took some right. courses in college, but I feel like part of that is probably you seeing a man become all he became, and you're like, okay, if that's what it takes. Maybe that's what right. I should be to some degree or another. Right. And you kind of right. emulate it a little bit right. for a while. And you fight yeah. back. We fight back like internally, like with your own perspective and like, you know, your own life situation. But it's part of it's there because it made such a big impact on you. For sure. Yeah. No, I think that makes sense. But uh, but yeah. No, I don't know, man. I the politics stuff. I I try and stay away from now. Yeah. It just uh, I I mean, I still kind of like observe it occasionally, but um, it's just it's so like kind of like factious and like segmented that it, there's no way to really like have con- like constructive conversations about it or like or introduce anything new into the conversation because like everybody's kind of got their corner and everybody's siloed into their perspective, you know. So politics is like kind of a yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. I mean, I. I don't know. I, I would like to like get interested in, in it again at some point, but right now it's just kind of, it's a little bit much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I like to know the whole politics behind all this Joe Rogan shit. Oh yeah. Right. It's yep. a crazy situation going on with Joe Rogan. It feels like they're, it feels like they're attacking him from, from all angles, you know? Yeah. And sometimes when you see something, you're like, okay, this is like, there's like one thing, right? But then like, there's multiple different news sources covering multiple different stories about this guy right now. Like they are yeah. definitely trying to take him down. Well, I think like the the corporate media has an incentive to do so because he's a threat to their like preeminence. You know, like yeah. he's he's absorbing a lot of the the audience that I mean they they kind of incorrectly think that they could potentially be you know like conquering. Yeah, but they already are conquering. They have for like right. 60, 70 years. And this is the thing: like corporate media makes the narrative but we found out they were lying like everybody knows the corporate media does what they do for views they more spews for more views and just having that knowledge be public knowledge for so long and there's being this internet era and this like recording revolution where all this stuff becomes affordable to the average man and you could just produce your own show in your house right Right. it's like all with all these innovations happening like we as a people like Joe Rogan being kind of the voice for us in a weird way and not like preemptively made all this happen and kind of made this new form of alternate news where people get a little bit of truth, even if it is like playing around and pandering with these ideas that we have maybe nothing like not enough wherewithal to kind of talk about. But it's like it's still it's still a good idea for the average Joe to kind of like um, vibe out and, and open up his mind to those those ideas about what's going on to the world and i think that's what joe mm-hmm. rogan did right he t- connected with the average person yeah and kind of like too much right because <laughs> there's more average yeah. people than not they see him as a threat that's the majority of the people and so like yeah they see him as a threat and so the news was like f- they're like fuck that we can't have that right we got to yeah. push back for them they're saying that he's giving like false information which is the same thing the news does, which is weird why that's that's right. the reason they're trying to cancel him, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's the irony is that, I mean, that's the main criticism that, well, now there's this kind of new, uh, you know, controversy that's going on that I was reading about earlier where I guess like he said, uh, said the N-word in a series of podcasts over like several yeah. years, and now he's in hot water over that. But on the misinformation thing, it is kind of ironic because like at the same time that you can make the argument that some of the like, people who Joe Rogan has platformed ha- have provided some misinformation. Like you said, the news also does that on a relatively frequent basis. And so it's a little bit hypocritical for them to like act like they're, you know, hyperventilating or like super concerned about the detriment that, it, that that is to democracy yeah. when they're engaging in the same type of behavior. So much so that it's created people like Joe Rogan to be at the top of the media and yeah. other alternate yeah. sources like Crystal and Sager, yeah. people who people who are leaving these large scale media companies to mm-hmm. give real information to people. Right. You know? Right. 
Yeah, independent media is, is kind of where the future is. Like, and it kind of has been like for a period of time. I, I mean, I, I find that even with that, like that's becoming increasingly like partisan or like kind of rigidly ideological. But, um, but I still think that that's the place to turn to if you're looking for like more kind of like objective, like un, not unbiased because ev- all information has bias from some angle or another, but as unbiased as possible, like you're going to find it. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Breaking points and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's a crazy time to be alive. Cause it's like coming at us from every angle. I saw this quote from, uh, I think it was Einstein. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to misquote it, but I'll, I'll butcher it. But it was something along the lines of like, like uh, one day, you know, technology will be so free and mm-hmm. like the rich will own all the media and there'll be so many things pretty much coming at people from different angles. It'll be hard for the average person to make an informed decision. Yeah. And I think that's where we're living now. I think that's what he meant to say, you know? Yeah. It's like a tyranny of, um, of not tyranny of choices. Uh, That's like a a different thing, but like a tyranny of like information. It's like so much information that you can't possibly process it in any sort of productive way. You know, yes. or it's hard to. Yes. It um, is. And so I think that's why people default to like some source that they view as credible. And that source, like from their perspective, like distills it all down and explains it like in a cohesive, coherent worldview. And then that's what they adopt. And they just kind of accept it wholesale. And so it provides a lot, a lot of like incentive for people to stop like actually questioning things. And yeah. Just kind of accept whatever, you know, like hey, I'm not trying to like pinpoint any you know, particular party or ideology, but like Tucker Carlson, maybe on the right or Rachel Maddow on the left, like whatever those people say, you just kind of accept it and just go with that. You know, Mm -hmm. if you had to pick, because I don't Mm -hmm. know a lot about politics, so this is going to be a learning experience for me. I think every time I talk Mm -hmm. to you, it's a little bit of a learning experience for me. So what side would you choose now and why? And, and are you, you know, are you one of those people who are happy that Biden and Kamala are in, are in the office, or were you more of a Trump supporter? Who, you know, do you do you care to say who you voted for in that situation? Oh, I don't mind. I, I mean, I voted for Biden. Okay. Um, I I don't really consider myself like very partisan or or ideological. Like increasingly, like I don't really identify with either party because I feel like largely the Republicans are kind of they've kind of become like a cult of personality. Not judging like the support base or like the everyday person who's a Republican, but just like the party like as as a whole has just kind of become like this like you know it's dedicated to Trump he's essentially the entire party and then on the left with the democrats you've got kind of like a neoliberal establishment that largely controls it and they're beholden to corporations and and they mainly like indulge in like the identity politics stuff because it's a way for them to like maintain liberal street cred but at the same time like not upset the donors so you you're so so you're basically saying you're aware of what your party is doing wrong but you're also aware that they're lesser of the two evils that's kind of the general sense that i get and i and i mean depending on the story everything's on a case-by-case basis so there may be instances where in fact, the Democrats aren't the lesser of two evils. You know, like I, I kind of agreed with Trump's approach to North Korea as unorthodox as it was, um, because instead of, uh, you know, like saber, rat- well, they, he did saber rattle for a while, but eventually um, he decided to pursue diplomacy, which I think is usually the smart thing to do when you're talking about potential, you know, thermonuclear warfare. Yeah. Um, and then uh, with this situation with the Biden administration and them ramping up things with Russia and like putting... Uh, you know, troops on the border of Ukraine and fighting all these proxy wars and yes. these sanctions like this that. week. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that. That's stupid. You know, like like you should be pursuing. I'm sure that there are diplomatic strategies that you can pursue that can prevent an escalation that could put us at risk for a nuclear conflict, you know. So so it is kind of circumstantially dependent. Um, but I thought going into the 2020 election, I felt like Biden was the better choice because I felt like the Democrats could potentially mount a more competent response to COVID uh, mainly. And I also kind of tend to agree with them on like economic policy and things like that. But I definitely saw like the downsides and I'm, I'm definitely no fan of Kamala Harris. Like I feel like she's like, she's like a robot made in a politician factory. Like she, she has no like guiding principles. Like she's essentially just designed to like pursue power, like in, in pursue fulfillment through, attaining political office. You know? I honestly so. think she's a horrible human being for what she's done, like as a prosecutor in her past oh, yeah. and stuff yeah, like that. Course. So like, uh, so you guys know things that I don't spill the beans. This is, uh, well, this is juice. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Um, 
well, she was a prosecutor and she wrongfully convicted a lot of people, especially on marijuana charges. Yeah. And then um, the main thing for the Biden campaign, or not main thing, but like one of the mm-hmm. side side things for the Biden campaign were legalization. Okay. Um, yeah. And here you are saying that you were pro this, this, and this. Okay, I'm not. I'm and not then defending. when you when you were and uh, and when she was uh, um, a prosecutor, she um, she was wrongfully convicting the people right like, for marijuana like, use for yeah. life sentences. Right, I'm not saying that's right. I think that's definitely wrong. But what I I will what I will say on Kamala's behalf is just you know when you're doing your job, you're doing your job, and the laws change. Right. It's almost right. to say that like, can you get mad at your high school teacher when they were still teaching like the Christopher Columbus yeah. discovered America when when mm-hmm. I was in middle school, they were changing that. Yeah, right? like, literally I, I the books that, change but, like, at some when you're point. You're changing evidence really... or withholding evidence to convict people. Right. That's unconstitutional, that, and that that's is that's something that is unconstitutional. I'm not denying that at all, but I'm saying that's something we can definitely. That's something you yeah. can definitely. I'd like to get. Um, do some reading on that. I think that would be interesting to find out more about kind of who she is as a person, which I have, like I said, sure. I have no idea. That's why I'm saying I don't know much about politics. And that's why I was like pretty excited for you to come tonight to kind of give me some. Oh yeah. Thanks dude. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like with the Kamala Harris thing, like I could even kind of forgive like the, the bad policy decisions on like, there was a, another thing that she pursued uh, when she was attorney general of California was she um, was a big proponent of, um, jailing parents for truancy violations okay. which i thought was a little bit like draconian or like kind of over the top you know um but i could even forgive like those bad policy decisions if i felt like she had some sort of like larger like guiding like kind of vision or these like principles that she thought would you know make the country better or or chart like a better path for the future but i feel like she doesn't really have any of that because i like i tried to watch her like pretty close during the primary and it was all just like these like platitudes and like her slogans were all kind of like empty and didn't really like express anything specific, you know, it, like she just kind of she's kind of got that Hillary Clinton phenomenon going on where people can tell that there's a disingenuousness or like an inauthenticity. OK. And I, that's kind of why I'm like I'm really like I think if Kamala Harris is the nominee in 2024, which she, she might be because hypothetically, you know, Biden may not may end up not running again if he's sure. truly like in cognitive decline or something like that. Um, I think that she'll probably get trounced by Trump. And yeah. and as bad as she is, I think Trump would probably be a little bit worse for the country. And so so that's a recipe for disaster. So so I kind of I guess like long story short, I kind of hate both parties right now. Like and <laughs> I'm not sure like I have uh, you know, I'm kind of in no man's land politically. Yeah, I don't uh, know where. Uh, you know, as, I tried to align myself with the Libertarian Party, but they're pretty much a joke now. So, right, right. So, um, this is like Gary, so Gary much. Johnson. Yeah, stuff, but yeah. like uh, Gary Johnson. All right. So all I really wanted when Gary mm. Johnson was running was that five percent, and he was yeah. the he was the hope to get that five percent so that yeah. they could become federally funded so that there would be three parties. Yeah. That's what yeah. I wanted. I wanted this more just goes than to show like even yeah. a man who's literally like, you know, went to school for political science. Mm-hmm. Uh, y- you don't like yeah. either party and you actually understand the logistics of these situations. And like, I feel like that's where everyone's at. Right. Is there yeah. anyone in America who's really like on one side or the other super hard? Or is that just a, a mm-hmm. narrative that the media pushes so that we are once again put pit against each other. Well, know? that's right, what I'm saying. Right. Even the first president of the United States, George Washington, said that do not make political parties. Like, just he yeah. said, just don't yeah. do it. Like, he, he just, then how do we elect? How do you choose? Right? Who's going to be the guy? They just say that that's the same thing as like a kingship, right? Or like, how do you say that? Like a, a monarchy, right? If, sure. If no one's elected, right? Which I think a lot of it is too. Do you? Uh, mm-hmm. Are you into conspiracy theories at all, Kev? Uh, a, a little bit here and there. Let me ask I mean, you this. What yeah. do you make of like all of these people in politics being related in some way or another <laughs> and have been for a long, yeah, long that time? Is a what bit, do you think about that? It's a little bit suspicious. Have you I, ever looked at that family tree? Like I don't that? think I have. Okay. No, I haven't looked at it. Like you're talking about like kind of the, um, like what the bloodlines like of the 13 like, families or something like that. There's like a, Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I see like the supposedly, Rothschilds and the sh- sure. Yeah. Supposedly yeah. all the way back to like the royalty and the queen and all that. Like supposedly everyone, even, even in politics in America somehow related, but could that also attribute sure. to the fact that they, we've all fucked at some point because there's <laughs> only so many people and our DNA is just splashed everywhere. Like a that fucking could be Jackson Pollock. Well, they say that like everyone is like, 
uh, like at most you can only be separated from someone else by like six degree or yeah it's like the six degrees of separate or like it uh everyone is everyone else's sixth cousin or something yeah along those lines i'm kind of butchering that, that no concept, but i know but, what you mean it's similar to like string theory right it's like yeah, you, you're only yeah. so many people away from the person that you want to meet or like your right, soulmate or right. your next job or your whatever right it's like sure. right there and you're only a few people away from you just got to make the right moves to get there to the, to the person. Yeah. I, I was going to say weirdly on the conspiracy theory thing, I got invited to, uh, to give a talk at a nine 11 truth or conference one time. <laughs> oh, shit, and dude. the reason why is because I wrote an article in college about how I thought that like, although nine 11, it would basically the premise of it was not that nine 11 was an inside job, but it was that the nine 11 truth or movement made several strategic mistakes, which resulted in them not gaining more traction. Because like with the JFK assassination, like something like 63% of Americans think that it was either the FBI or the CIA. Like they think it was someone other than, uh, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald. Sure. Um, but with the 9-11 truther movement, like they didn't really ever like gain that much like traction with, you know, with the, the larger, you know, narrative. Because it was such a big thing. And it was like right. no one really wants to believe that, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no one yeah. wants to believe that. It's hard to think that. It is, yeah. So I, I wrote an article, like, kind of talking about where they aired, like, strategically, but people interpreted it as, like, I was saying that 9-11 was an inside job, even sure. though that's not what I meant. Sure. And so, like, I had, like, a this guy who runs this conference contact me, and he was like, hey, like, you know, we read your article, and we want you to, like, come explain why 9-11 was orchestrated by the Bush administration. I was like, I don't think that at all. No. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Al-Qaeda. Do you um, think that it would have been a good idea to go and just get the, take the gig and kind of just, <laughs> and then just be like, hey, I'm actually here to counter this. I don't mean to, like, disrupt your thing here, but I just right. wanted to give you yeah. some truth. Is yeah. that what this is for the truthers, you sons of bitches? Like, don't yeah, do I you probably, send me packing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they pr I probably should have gone and tried to get them to, like, hire me as a consultant or something like that. because. Sure. I could be like, I'm just advising you guys on how to like do better. I think you're all full of shit, but like, yeah. here's how you could actually make it work. You know, maybe I could have made some money. I would have shown that email back, you know? Yeah. 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 Maybe I should like contact that guy again and be like, I've had a change of heart, you know? Yeah. I want to <laughs> come to your thing. <laughs> yeah. So like, the thing that bothers me about like stuff like that is like some people just can't think that it would just happen. Right. Right. Yeah, so, like, uh, I mean, like, when it comes to, like, 9-11 and stuff like that, am I on the fence about some of the stuff? Is some of the stuff a little bit iffy? Yeah. Of course. Lizard yeah. people. It's like, give yeah. me a fucking break. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah are, that's they take, a, are they taking the sunglasses off of the little fucking guy on the Raisin Bran box when right. they're sleeping? <laughs> Big Kellogg's. Right. Big cereal's coming to get you. It's the Mandela effect. Like, get the right. fuck out of town. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I think that's far. silly. Yeah, yeah. I think... I think a lot of that, dude, is just us sending all these products that we miss make over to other countries, and then people just get pictures of them and shit. That you know could I mean? be. Like, that Sinbad yeah. movie could have been a pilot that just never got out, but only <laughs> got out on video, just like the Pam and Tommy tape, right? Oh, and yeah. A bunch of people yeah. did see it, but that never came out with him in it or something. Like, we, we don't know. Right? Yeah. It could have been like a ghostwriter. The, the thing about the yeah. Sinbad movie is, it, like, uh, the, everybody's uh, trying to compare it to, like, uh, um, all I this other it. stuff, but, the, like... <laughs> But like uh, the thing, I swear to like, God, the thing around that time they said that it was uh, uh, Shazam, and then Sinbad was releasing all the all these movies right around Shazam. Yeah, or no, not Shazam. Which one was the one with? Uh, uh, yeah, it was Shaquille O'Neal. That was Shaz oh. that was Steel. No, that's not Steel. Kazam. Kazam. Kazam yeah, is right. Kazam is uh, uh, Shex. Like so. Uh, around that time, like all these Sinbad movies are coming out on Dude, Disney Channel, and Shaq, Kazam was being. Check this out. What if Shaq has a time machine? I I mean I could see that happening. Right, right. He's, he, a, he's one of those big celebrities that got so much money that he might be like. Dude, yeah, I'm gonna need the time machine. Like, <laughs> dude, he's a Renaissance man. He like does it all. He's like, a, I think like a police deputy yeah. as well. Yeah. He's and like uh, the Steven yeah. Seagal of NBA, right? Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> so he, I mean, he could build a time machine probably. Fuck Seems yeah. like a smart guy. A huge so. time machine, dude. A, a really, really big time Fuck machine. Fuck around and yeah. take a car <laughs> with you. Like, there's a there's a thing that I read on um, that I read on Reddit that a guy went and took a leak next to Shaq at, at a stall and looked over, and he caught him looking over, <laughs> and um, he goes crazy, right? Big dude, regular sized dick. <laughs> oh wow, wow! That's <laughs> like, fucking uh, weird. Like I mean, like, but uh, then like when you're I, I believe it though. Like it's just like it's, yeah, his wife is small for real. 
You know what I mean? I think the thing is, though, like when you're that big a dude, like a regular sized dick is now a small dick. Yeah. <laughs> so like you're kind of like That's in true. a tough situation. Yeah. But uh, just proportionality speaking. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, he's still, I mean, he's Are you packing, it. Kevin? Is that what you're getting at? <laughs> <laughs> you skinny dudes like you, bro. You guys I always <laughs> got that whip. <laughs> I try not to. I mean, I'm a white dude, so we're sure. suppo- kind of supposed to joke about being small. That's supposed sure. to be the yeah. idea. We're not supposed if we've got if we're doing okay. We're not supposed to really. I know, but you got to have a lot of confidence to fucking lead a campaign for a black dude with a huge dick. So. <laughs> <laughs> Bukak Obama. But, uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, there's probably a, a porno out there that's titled that or Big something. Caco. Oh, for sure, bro. Like yeah. definitely. There I'd was like Na- Nayland Palin was Nayland was Palin? really popular. Dude, yeah. I thought that uh, I'm. I'm not gonna lie i i kind of like got a crush on like you know nerdy conservative mm-hmm. chicks and like is and just i'm just into that or whatever but not actually sarah palin but the chick that played her on snl um oh yeah tina, tina fey. fey yeah dude, she's, i always thought that was hot i was like dude she's like a hot version of sarah palin <laughs> i would love for her to like you know what i mean like fucking tell me what to do or whatever she, she's kind of interesting because she um like that girl right right <laughs> When when she was first on, because uh, I used to, and you probably did too, but I used to watch like SNL like when I was a kid and stuff. Yeah. And when she was on there like with Jimmy Fallon doing Weekend Update, she wasn't that attractive. Right. Uh, like she, she was just like a regular kind of chick. Just yeah. Just like a comic, like a stinky clown still. Exactly. Yeah. But and then she, she got <laughs> hot when she started doing movies too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she got yeah. that money. <laughs> that like, money will do wonders. Fucking you know? A, dude. All the like creams and, you know, different like, you know, treatments. Yeah. And that'll fix it up. You get that movie but, money, bro. You start getting laser hair removal and all this shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> start looking hot sure i yeah. guess there's nothing wrong with that you know no I mean, you gotta if you stay got the fit resources. and young right yeah. yeah i think that's the that's the, those are the people that do it they add another 10 years or so to their life and they for sure get their career you know i might not yeah. blow up until i'm in my 40s god damn it kevin i'm gonna need <laughs> hair dye and botox and fucking <laughs> if you can get rich by your 40s you can look like you're in your 30s by your by the time you're in your 50s yes dude you and know? things so are that's changing the goal. they have like cryotherapy and all this fucking like yeah. light sensitivity stuff that they can like get. uh hyperbaric chambers and stuff yes, that people dude. sleep in Yes, yeah. that and then there's also there used to be this thing in my this old gym that I went to, where it was basically called red light therapy. Are you familiar with this? It sounds familiar. So it basically like rejuvenates mm-hmm. like um, certain cells within your body that only um, really occur when you're going through puberty, and when you stop developing as a person, those don't come out anymore. So it's mm-hmm. like it like hypes those cells back up in your body. It also like makes you burn fat. It does wonders for your skin. But I wow. I used to do it all the time. And I like I I look back on pictures and I'm like, I looked great. I don't know if my diet was better then mm-hmm. or if it attributed to that thing, but I always felt really good when I came out of that laser chamber, bro. Wow. Does so does that treatment have like an impact on your hormone levels? Dude, is I that what it does? I don't know, but red light therapy is kind of like a big thing, and I don't know if that's a fad or if it's just like mm-hmm. something that I'm buying into and I I wanted it to help, or mm-hmm. if it was really helping. But I, I don't know yeah. exactly what it does. Zach, can you can you Google that, my man? Find out exactly what that does for you. I'm sure, we can find Dude, out. Dude, this is kind of embarrassing, but I started doing um, testosterone injections because okay. I went to the doctor and uh, he was like, uh, you know, I think um, part because I was having a few health problems. And he was like, you're like super low on testosterone. And it's like weird considering your age. Like you shouldn't be that low yet, you know? Yes. And so I started doing like testosterone or testosterone Sip- replacement. Or, uh, or uh, sustenate. What are, you do- what are you doing? I have no idea. I just I went to the place is. and the, they would just like shoot me up. Oh, they do it there yeah. on site. You don't have to do it yourself. Yep. Gotcha. And uh, so I did that for a while. I, I stopped doing it because I kind of got like some benefits from it and I started to feel a little bit better. Yes. Um, and it takes so, a while. Yeah, yeah, and then I just got super busy, but I think I'm going to resume it again because I kind of feel like... You should, bro. Yeah. It, I remember talking to you about that a while yeah. back. Yes, that's good, bro. I'm glad you got in there. Did you go to that place down mm-hmm. south that we were talking about? Uh, or is it somewhere local to you? Yeah, I think I just like ended up going local. Like yeah. I just found like a local doctor, and he actually recommended it. Just They like ran like a battery of like different tests or whatever, and he was like, you know, I've seen testosterone replacement therapy like help with some of these things and yes. help with like, like uh, the trimmers and stuff like that. And uh, so he was like, let's just give it a shot. And yeah. it was like pretty effective. I think that uh, probably like I'll probably have to do that. I feel I feel like mm-hmm. I'm getting into my 30s and stuff. And I'm just like I'm getting a little bit. I'm I'm training more, but I'm I'm getting more tired. Right. Like it's just sure. I think sure. that for sure, bro, like with as busy as a life that I have, as busy as my life is, like having three kids, being a comic, doing these these shows, like just traveling, yeah. all uh, working full time. Like it's just like. 
so much that I have to like I have to do something like soon. I think. I sure. Just, I'm just like fucking bogged down, dude. Like for real. Sometimes, sometimes it gets you, and I know what you mean, bro. Like, and yeah. I I think also I used to like fucking I used to take Winstrel and shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Winstrel like steroids. And I think it. Damn. Fucked, I think it fucked my hormones up a little it, bit. It might have. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's possible. Yeah, I think it might have, bro. Because like you just also as you get older, bro, you just it declines like that's a natural yeah. progression but as a man we don't have to live like that anymore just because like science and medicine mm-hmm. are so amazing these days bro yeah like i've been reading about trt for a while actually and mm-hmm. like i hear wonders about it joe rogan he does trt oh yeah that's right yeah, yeah, yeah i've heard about that he's like yep. 50 something and he um yeah do yeah. you know how much you were taking or anything like that or yeah, I don't really know the dosage, yeah. you know. Like, I would just go into the place. Actually, That's something I would definitely be curious about, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I, I kind of start asking. Like, <laughs> excuse me, how much are you shooting me up with? Like, it's <laughs> important to. Okay, I, well, uh, it says right here, red light therapy is a, um, it's a controversial therapeutic technique that uses low red level wavelengths or light to treat skin issues. Okay. Um, it also helps apparently, uh, build collagen, uh, yeah, my skin uh, simulate, great, like simulate collagen production, which gives the sen- uh, skin structure, strength and elati- elasticity increases fiber, uh, f- fibroblast production, which makes collagen. Okay. I don't know about all that science behind it, but it was definitely making me look better. Like my face was visibly like thinner and just like. My pores look clean. Like, I don't know. Gotcha. I was doing it like three times a week. Like every, Damn. every time I would go to the gym, I would <laughs> jump in this fucking thing. And it was like full body too. Like nice. t- it's kind of like a tanning bed. You would stand in it and it would just right. kind of like put it all over you. So like, dude, if- my dick looked great too. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I didn't cover my dick. When I did it, bro. it looked fantastic. Dude, it, if it makes you feel good and like there are no like known like long-term side effects or anything like that i say like just go for it i mean yeah. obviously everything in moderation but for like sure. any of those treatments that like really give you some benefit it it's like why not lean into it and like improve your quality of life yeah yeah for sure i think so too dude we live like i said we live in such a cool time to where yeah if that's what you want to do you can do that or if you want to you know if you want to like get gerbils stuffed up your ass or <laughs> whatever you want to do this See is other, just a different time yeah. bro this is like a great time to be alive you can be the best you can be the happiest you know like right now yeah it. you can be any it, it is the first time in history that you can kind of be anything yeah you speaking know? of lights coming from the sky dude check this out um you said that and i wanted to pull mm-hmm. this up uh so this is something that happened in uh, Brazil a few weeks ago, and I took a, well, yeah. it says actually January 25th, so about a week ago. What the fuck, dude? Like, this is coming from the sky, and this is a local person that had taken a picture of this, and uh, they sent it into the news, and it's like, what was coming down from the sky, bro? I have no right. explanation at all, and neither did they. It's, uh, it's just like a weird thing, dude. So this isn't anything related to like, you know, like a solar flare or like aurora borealis or anything like that. It's just kind of this organic like yeah. light that just emitted from the sky for no reason. Onto the mountaintop. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's it's like the second coming or something bro, like that. Bro, it's like, like is Jesus here, yeah. bro? <laughs> is he here? If like, it was going to happen, it, I mean, it would happen around Are you a religious time. person? Do you believe in God? Oh, man, I I don't... Re- well, I, that's not true. I'm kind of like agnostic, um, but I, I really... I think that the Big Bang Theory has like a lot of like logical, like scientific validity, you okay. know? Because like they... Um, um, it, my understanding of it is that they created that theory because they observe like at the edges of the universe with the Hubble telescope that there's like this um, cosmic microwave background is what they call it. It's like a red glow basically. And um, because of the Doppler effect, you know, like when uh, there's a, like a red or there's like an object that's emitting red, you know, that it's moving away because it yeah. has like longer wavelengths as opposed to if it were moving toward you, it would have shorter wavelengths and so that's how how they know that the universe it, or the universe is like infinitely expanding and they essentially just pinpointed how far it had expanded and then mathematically reverse engineered that and that's how they got developed the, the big the bang date, theory basically yeah yeah and they got to like you know the universe is like 13 trillion years old or 13 billion years old um and then the earth is 4.6 billion years old like they it, it's fairly scientifically sound you know so you're saying that the the math that they did to measure the end of this Doppler mm-hmm. that basically uh, is coming off mm-hmm. of us, this ray of energy, all the way back to the center in reverse. Like they somehow yeah. multiplied that to get the date and time. And also they probably had to realize that in order for something at that magnitude, like you said, 
to make that big of an impact, it would have had to have been that big in the beginning also for right. it to create all this. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the idea is it goes back to um, what they call like uh, uh, Planck's Epoch, which is like essentially uh, like a singularity where like the universe was all concentrated in like one like infinitesimally small point. And then it like there was like an inflationary period it like expanded and then just exploded. And, and so because of that, it's kind of hard for me to be like religious in the traditional sense, sure. you know? So I kind of like, I'm agnostic in the sense that, I mean, you don't know if like someone, you know, precipitate or something else precipitated that event or someone uh, orchestrated it or something. Exactly. Like that, you yes. Know? That's where I, that's where I lie. I like, sure. to, I like to, I, I think it's easy to say you're agnostic because I do the same thing and it's, it's easy to be like, mm-hmm. I don't really know which religion is right, but I right. feel like there's definitely some sort of higher power. So I feel yep. like I, I can agree with you on that. And, uh, and, and with that said, it's, it's like, I like to think a little bit of both exist. I feel like it, maybe it's part science, mm-hmm. but also maybe it's like organic, but it's part like yeah. someone else that planted the seed or yeah. right. Like a God could necessarily just be like some kid in a lab somewhere. Right. Yeah. Like that could be our God in a way. So I believe that there's definitely a higher power that probably created all of this, but mm-hmm. that's also like a really grandiose way to think too. Right. As a human, we kind of are just like a speck in time. When you look back on the universe, like our species might not even exist for very long to be sure. honest. You know what I mean? So yeah. On a geologic time on a scale, geological it's like a level, blink yeah. of an eye. You know? Yeah, dude. I mean, like we've a little grain of sand in the yeah. time scale. Yeah. We've been, I mean, we've been around, um, 200,000 yeah. years 200,000 yeah. that we know of yeah. right at least that modern day science can prove or super super short because I mean the dinosaurs uh, dinosaurs were around for hundreds of millions of years yeah dude what's going to come after us are we, is, are we going to turn into something else right because we were something else before that obviously oh, sure. we still carry that DNA what, yeah. what's, uh, mm-hmm. what trips me out though is like we only have like the Dead uh, Sea Scrolls only got to 6,000 years wasn't it something like that yeah, yeah. and yeah. like uh, bes- besides that our next uh thing for languages uh cave drawings right so right. we don't know what's like <laughs> like our history is only six percent of human or, or yeah the history of humans is only six percent documented so that's right that's that's, right. that's insane there's yeah. a lot we don't know and sure. and you know what instead of doing that this is what people are doing we're uh <laughs> we're fucking making hover bikes <laughs> that's what we're doing <laughs> a japanese startup is t- is taking deposits for seven hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars for their new hover bike isn't that fucking nuts that's dude? ridiculous yeah only ballers are gonna be able to fucking ride on those those are gonna be like the right. rich kids at school and shit eventually right. it will like the technology will trickle down in like 20 years and right. everyone will have to have hover or you won't be able to be on the road with a gas car right so yeah keep down emissions and stuff like that yep. but this is the start of it Dude, I saw a weird thing where they're um, creating planes that are shaped like beluga whales. Oh I'm shit! I'm like, why dude. the fuck would you do that? Like, you're uh, you're shaping it like something that flops into the ocean. Yeah, you know, like, uh, like literally. <laughs> if there's, <laughs> that's not a. That's a good bit. That could be a bit. Dude. I was thinking about turning it <laughs> yeah, into one, that's but funny. But like, it, the NTSB would literally be like, the cause of the crash was that it was shaped like a fucking whale. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You know, just like stupid stuff like that. Like, what a waste of time. Yeah, you know, we you think could that be. we're uh, you think that we're um, shaping rockets wrong? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Do you, I don't do you know need to that. get word. Do we need right. to get word to Elon? Um, <laughs> all right, Kevin's got some uh, math for you, Elon. If got we can send you a formal ideas. email, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think rockets thus far. I mean. They like made fun of people because they were shaped them like penises and stuff. But I mean, rockets are shaped like penises, so so are I mean, all the greatest things <laughs> in the world, dude. Like, right, right. Like this bottle of water or this yeah, microphone. Yeah, exactly. Like all the important things are shaped like dicks. Pretty much everything on some level is phallic, you know. Yeah, like sure. you look at a toaster, you're like, I could kind of see how that could be a, a penis or a woman. I would say a woman. A toaster could be the woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or something. It's either a penis or something you can stick your penis into, right? It's right. Like everything right. is designed. The outlets in the wall. Even even yeah. like the obelisk and like the pyramids that we worship, those are a little bit yeah. booby and kind of like penisy, right? Yep. Sticking about just a big stone dick sticking <laughs> out of the ground, dude. Right. Well, a lot of like Freudian stuff going on sure. when people design things. Sure. You know, architecture. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Sigmund Freud. I like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Freud, but I was also more of a fan of uh, Ma- Maslow. I feel like, I feel like that was one of those um, guys who, who came early on after Freud. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that really, uh, kind of set the tone for modern psychology as far as like how they yeah. test people's personalities and stuff like that. Yeah. He was like, um, was he like 
operant conditioning or something like that or a cl- like classical conditioning classical or, conditioning yeah. but what i know him for mostly was his pyramid of needs and he kind of broke down what a human mm. being needs as like psychologically oh, to yeah. make them feel comfortable to be able to go to the next level in life in order to get to like self actualization sure. essentially yes yeah. exactly yeah. that's the top of the pyramid essentially so that'd be like, awesome yeah it's like how do we get there though right that's a lifelong battle <laughs> it seems so easy on paper and yeah. i wrote a report about that in college and i was like it seems so yeah. easy on paper but like to actually get to that point is much more difficult than I think any human is really prepared to deal with. Yeah, I, I think it requires a lot of like, it, I don't know, just combining contradictory things. Like like if you can be detached, but at the same time like present in the moment and like sure. invested in things. Sure. There's like some mixture there that's like perfectly optimized. But I, I don't know how you get to that without like, you know, years of or like decades of like intensive like cognitive therapy or something yeah like that's got to be tough it's almost like a flow state in a way right yeah but that flow state it's like when you see uh I feel like, you know, life kind of sometimes films and like good literature will leave us clues on things like this, like the movie Click with Adam Sandler, for example. Yeah. It's like he has that remote and like that's when he's able to get into his flow state and kind of like, Mm -hmm. right, get his important stuff done. But it's almost like where where do we find that balance of what's important and what's not like you don't want to end up on the ground on your deathbed like with your family leaving with another man right (laughs) it's like you want to have that balance and it's so hard dude like yeah and i'm thinking we're talking about psychology and i think that's probably just me with my own inner demons coming out right now thinking about that kind of thing sure it's a paradox because you need success to have all those fulfilling like you know family type things yeah but when you pursue success, you sacrifice in those areas, mm-hmm. you know, so it's a, it's kind of a, like the people who get to that self-actualization, like the work that they must put in to get there, it has to be just off the charts. And I think I'm too like lazy. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, that's why I can't get to self-actualization or anywhere close to it. Yeah. I think you could, if you got back on test, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you started think? with yeah. lifting weights a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah. That was probably like the, uh, what's that movie? Um, with uh, Bradley Cooper, um, uh, Limitless. Or, Limitless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Testosterone could only do that. I mean, it has benefits, right? You know? Dude, I think that there's something that, like that that exists, and I think there's also ways that we can get there even without drugs. Like, right? Like, I follow mm-hmm. Russell Brand a lot. Do you know Russell Brand? Are you familiar yeah. with his work? He's a yep. great guy. I was always a fan of him, like as like comedy when I was younger, and like seeing him mm-hmm. act in movies and such. But like now. He uses his, um, you know, his power, his influence to kind of mm-hmm. talk about political issues. And I think that's yeah. that's really cool, right? Because it's like a lot of stuff that I was talking about earlier that I don't understand is the every man. Mm-hmm. And like being an average Joe, like you kind of want someone that you can turn to, to to break these ideas down. So he's just one of those people. Yeah. And um, I feel like, uh, fuck, I don't know what I was trying to I was trying to make a mm-hmm. point maybe that I got from something that I heard from him in some way. But I don't know now. I'm going to quote him, I think. Dude, I really know what you're saying about uh, about his like content though because he's one of those guys, one of those few people who like really is kind of like in the like the center. Not not the act uh, not like the there's like an Overton Window Center which is like that's the, like the in political terms, you know, but like the, you mean the, like the people actual, in a hierarchy of people in a, in per se like publicly is that what you're saying? Like, well, he's kind of like he has a perspective that's kind of like just like consummately like just very rational you know yes and there's even in independent media there's a deficit in terms of those types of voices um and i think that they were emerging at one point but now they're kind of like declining but russell brand is like one of those guys who like you can watch him and you can tell there's not like an an ideological or political agenda like he's really just trying to analyze the situation and be, and be fairly objective and logical about it yeah you know yeah i would say he's more one of those um people in the media that is that gives you a non-biased opinion to a yeah. degree to a degree right sure he sure. definitely has his own views right that he's holding on to or whatever and that does come out mm-hmm. in his content but yeah yeah for sure bro one of those guys that i definitely like to listen to when it comes to stuff like that um but yeah definitely i was gonna say i don't know what else i have i definitely have some tiktoks i think we can watch yeah let's check them out dude yeah dude we have a few more minutes here nope i'll just cut this out <laughs> Dude, okay. Yeah, this is awesome, bro. Watch this. It's pretty long. I guess I can probably fast forward it a bit. Okay. So uh, just for the people only listening, if you guys are only listening, this is a news story where a woman fell down while she was hiking. 
and then okay this is not good my tv is frozen <laughs> Are we going to have to pause it? Does she start, like, spinning? Oh, she does. Have you seen this? I Yeah, I think this happened, like, several years ago. Uh, yes. So, that's got to be terrifying. Okay, the TV froze, but we're back on. But, yeah, so basically, like, dude, you break your ankle while you're hiking, and then the care right. flight picks you up, and you just spin, like. Oh, man. Dude, the guy they interviewed after said that she blacked out. She didn't know yeah. what was going on. Like, she was spinning so fucking hard. Right, the Bro, centrifugal force. I right? was crying when I the first time I seen this, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> okay, there it goes. It's not fast yet. Uh, though. I mean, it really goes like. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> and the wind from the chopper is just picking her up, dude. Right, right. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh God, they should design an amusement park ride that does something like that. Oh, uh, dude, and then they just take off with her. And she's oh, still man. spinning. They take her all the way to the <laughs> hospital like that. Like that? How uh -huh. do you know how far could she be? Like how far away were they? You think? I mean, I mean, it looks like they're in the middle of the, like the desert. <laughs> She's spinning so <laughs> fast. Oh. oh man, yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> never good, dude. Psychologically, how about why do I like to watch stuff like this? Why don't we? <laughs> why don't we <laughs> let's break that down for the viewers. Right. Maybe it's like a relief that you're not in that circumstance right now. Yeah, that's true too, you dude. Know? That's true. I think it has, par yeah, partly something to do with that, dude. Sometimes when I think about things, like uh, I'll get these really irrational fears, like, and I'll just like get anxiety for no reason. Like earlier, yeah. like I'm, I plan on buying a bigger house, and like I've been thinking of like looking around, and I was just talking about, I was talking to my girlfriend earlier about like. Mm -hmm. You know, we want a place with a basement, obviously, like so I could build a studio or whatever, just a bigger place for the kids. And like we want a place like maybe with a laundry chute. And I was like, wait, I was like, what if the kids get stuck in the laundry chute? I was like, what if I'm not here and you're sleeping? And they like dare each other to get in the laundry chute. And I was like, what if one of them gets stuck and they fucking die and they like can't breathe? Dude. Or like, dude, and I was like literally having this thought and like had yeah. a legit panic attack in my kitchen. And my girlfriend had like talked me down. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, she's like, she like changed the subject. She's like, that is not it. We don't even have a laundry chute. This is a hypothetical house, <laughs> right? It's like not even real, bro. But I, right. I legit like panicked. And like, I yeah. don't know. I don't know what that was that like triggered inside me. But I, I do have those thoughts occasionally. We'll have these like these like uh, uprises inside me where I yeah. get like freaked out about something that's not even happening. Like, Dude, I used to have a, an irrational anxiety that I would like just disappear and then reappear in the middle of the ocean. Really? Yeah, which is like that makes no sense because why would all. that ever happen? There, that doesn't like there are no laws of physics that are compatible with that at all. Sure. Um, but it, just for some reason, like it, and was it like, would scare you though internally like, a little bit. Yeah. Yes. But to yeah. be honest though, yeah. the, the ocean is terrifying. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, the ocean is terrifying. Like, I, I I fear the ocean more than I do space. The ocean is like yeah. Freddy Krueger yeah. for yeah. Kev, for Kevin. It just popped up in his <laughs> dreams. But, and it was but like, the ocean like it take you away. The ocean yeah. is oh, like is like less than like fifteen percent discovered like yeah yeah it's yeah. it's something like some crazy statistic like that like, Yo, dude, when i see people yeah. pull squids out of the fucking water though isn't that look like doesn't you think that looks like an alien kind of like in a crazy way right zach do you think there's yeah, like crazy yeah. shit like there's crazy well, i mean like you whales like, you just shit. don't like eat a house there's been so many species that haven't been identified like they catch like glimpses of these giant animals on like radars or on yeah. videos. There's like, so many cameras now, and, right? So many divers and, they, and shit yep, out there. Yep. And and then they find pieces of certain animals and you're like, what the fuck? Like Dude, you know what like, this, <laughs> this this is crazy. This pisses me off. I wish I would have had a shark bite video for you right now, Kevin, because this is the perfect segue. <laughs> oh man. That's a weird thing. I'm not that scared of sharks. No. And the, the other thing too is that when I lived in Florida, I would go swim in the ocean, not really have a problem. It was really just more the fear that I would be in a safe, secure environment, yeah. and then suddenly I would be in a different location. Like, I would get, like, teleported to the middle of the ocean, and it would be very unsettling because, you know, it was just such a drastic change. No, dude, that's that's literally wicked, bro. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I would never want to be in the middle of the ocean. Like, I went to Florida with my family last year, and they all, uh, like, we all rented a boat, and we went out and stuff, and it was fun. But then, like, yeah. the next day, they were going deep sea fishing. So they were like having someone else drive them, like a captain on a ship or a big boat. Okay. And they were going way out and like not where just a few, that, yeah, not a that. few miles off the shore, but like way, way, way out. out there. And they were talking about how people get sick and how it's like you, you're not coming back right. for like six hours. And I was like, Damn. fuck that. Like I immediately 
like I, I made up excuses like why I couldn't go and all this shit. But secretly right. it was like I was scared. Like yeah. deep down I was like, dude, there's no way I'm gonna get like bit by jaws or I'm gonna <laughs> fall off, right? The tide you takes could you do under. That. Yeah. You don't know what's gonna yeah. happen out there, bro. It yeah. is a scary thing. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I can identify with that. And then there's like the Bermuda Triangle and and uh things like that. Uh did did you hear about how like how JFK Jr. died? No. Like uh is so this he, recent? Um, well, this is a long time ago. This was like in the year 2000. Okay. But I watched a documentary on it, and he was um, flying from like New York City to Martha's Vineyard, and he was flying out over the ocean. And normally, um, if you're not good with like instrumentation, like if you fly based on like visual cues, then they advise that in the dark night you should stay along the coastline because that's your frame of reference because you can see light. Okay. Um, but he decided he wanted to try and expedite the trip. And he thought he could just fly out over the ocean and, and beeline it directly to Martha's Vineyard. And because he was out over the ocean without any frame, frame of reference, he got spatial disorientation. And he thought he was like, you know, at a normal altitude when really they were spiraling toward the ocean. Oh, shit. And had no idea until they actually crashed. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was like really fucked up. So, so it was just like, he. what's spatial disorientation? Is like a sickness that you get when you're driving for so long? Okay. Uh, it's kind of like um, you're flying a plane for so long, or or it's kind of like when you have no visual frame of reference. Okay. You know, like your body just can't make sense directionally. You know, so like if it's like pitch black, you know. But QAnon thinks he's coming back and running with Trump. <laughs> oh yeah, JFK Jr. and Trump. JFK would... Jr. and Trump. <laughs> what the fuck? That would be an interesting combination. That's crazy. I just want to say this: we're, we're, we are going to have to go soon. But uh, I wanted to say this. Speaking of like JFK and his son, you mentioning that, and also like his brother, because their whole family died in like really mysterious ways, and like yeah, and all except Ted, all except Ted. Uh, yeah, these yeah. guys are all mostly flying on planes that crash, which is you know, which is kind of weird. But um, I was just watching this movie on Hulu, which is a few years old. And I rewatched it though, some of it. It's a series, I think. But it's yeah. called like Eleven Twenty Two Sixty Nine. James Franco okay. is in it, and basically. I don't even think Frank is the greatest actor, but it's just a mm -hmm. really interesting series. <clears throat> Essentially, there's like this time portal in this restaurant um, this okay. old guy has, and then he's like sending Franco into the time portal. And for whatever reason, this is like three years before Kennedy dies. So the whole plot of this series is this dude wants to stop JFK from getting killed. Because if you stop JFK from getting killed, you stop Vietnam. You also stop his brother from running, which stops him from being on the plane that day, trying to go over to do, yeah. uh, trying to go overseas to to do uh, public relations with NATO. It also stops his son from yeah. dying, probably. Um, but it stops like a whole huge chain of events, and it's like this crazy butterfly effect. And I think that like, yeah, I think stuff like that happens all the time. I think these small, which JFK dying is not small. That's a huge ripple effect, sure. obviously. But I think there's a lot of smaller ones too that take place in life and. Uh, yeah. probably why we're sitting here right now in a weird way right yeah, exactly that's right. what i was thinking right. too like they're like oh well if i would go back in time i'd kill baby hitler and i'm like yeah why, why the fuck would you do that because you, you'd just yeah. be dead like yeah. you just you just right. disappear like it the reason you why have i no have idea yeah right. you have no idea so like your line yeah, yeah like it, that like just shit like that like i mean what you can do is mm -hmm. prevent another hitler from happening yeah like today and yeah. that's that's the best thing you can do from history is 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 try to Man. prevent it from repeating itself Hit, right hitler might be like the one exception where like it, despite the butterfly effect maybe you should kill him anyway right now, i don't even think it's well it, this is a difficult like argument to uh, thread the needle on but i, I mean it's not even like st i mean you should want to stop the holocaust obviously and, right like, you know events that you know are, that surrounded that um, but in addition to that, if you kill Hitler, then we probably don't have nuclear weapons right now. Right. Because the reason why we developed nuclear weapons was because the Third Reich was developing nukes, um, and then Russia started developing nukes, Dude. and it led to the arms race that... I also heard know, a lot of crazy stuff about the Third Reich developing, like, superhumans, and also a lot of, like, uh, supernatural things, like, involving, like, demons and, like, even zombies like and the occult type the stuff occult and stuff yeah. like that and a lot of that was yeah. steering some of that movement but i i do right. gotta say this like shack if you're listening we want to get in your <laughs> time machine and we want to go back and we want to kill yeah. baby hitler so word to shack we just want to let you know that kevin and i will be like bill and ted yep we'll get in your mm -hmm. giant phone booth and we'll go back in time and mm -hmm. we will stop this thing from happening so that would actually be a really good movie I think. that would be a great movie yeah. dude yeah i would Seriously. watch that yeah dude i think we play well together this has been a fun conversation by the way kevin i Thanks, really appreciate man. you coming on tonight, yeah bro. yeah absolutely dude. yeah i feel like yeah. I, I learned a little bit from you and like you're uh 
your your personality, you know, um, it rubbed off on me a little bit, and I'm feeling like I'm feeling like I'm smarter now for talking to you. Oh well, that's <laughs> nice of you to say, man. No, I I always enjoy talking to you, so I had I had a good time. Yeah, dude, me too, bro. Thanks a lot, and uh, let's cut it. Let's wrap it, Zach. Like, subscribe. Like, oh yeah. Well, we'll let's do this. <laughs> let's do this.